Okay, now time for some vocabulary. So from chapter one, we should remember that a variable is a letter that represents an unknown quantity or a quantity that's changeable. Now your book goes into the fact that variables represent three different things and you should go and you should read about that, but I'm not gonna waste our time um, talking about that some more. I think as we come across them, you're gonna see each of those on your own. Also recall that a constant was a quantity that did not change. In other words, it's just a number. And also recall that um, an expression is a sum of numbers and an algebraic expression is sum of terms. So let's talk about a term. A term is a number, a variable, a product of a number and a variable, or a variable raised to a power, or it could be products of those things. So um, example number eight here is just to show you a bunch of things that are terms. So five is a term, 5x could be a term, xy could be a term, x squared could be a term. Now the next thing we want to talk about is a numeric coefficient and what a numeric coefficient is is the number that's being multiplied by a variable. So what's the numeric coefficient of each of these in example 9 is what we're interested in. So example 9, the first one, part A there, is really easy. So 3x squared, the number that's being multiplied by the variable is quite obvious. It's a 3. So my numeric coefficient is 3. Now in my next example, it may not be quite so obvious what the numeric coefficient is. So let's talk about this one just a little bit. You see, anytime we have a variable written, there's always an assumed one in front of it. Like I have a pin, right? And you say, oh, I know that person has one pin. Well, I have a variable. So I assume it's one of those things. So as soon as I put a one in front of it, then we can kind of work backwards. And remember how we multiplied? We multiplied numerators and we multiplied denominators, right? Well, one, um, two times one is something that could have come up and given us two, right? So we multiply that there. And then from that, we could break it back into two parts, one half times the x over one. And from there, that's where we're going to see our numeric coefficient. So the numeric coefficient of this thing is a one half. And an easy way of seeing that is to look for the number in the numerator and the number in the denominator and make that your numeric coefficient. All right, and our next one here, hopefully you figured out how to find those numeric coefficients when they're fractions. So why don't you just pause this for a second and see if you get the right answer. All right, so did you get negative 5 halves as the numeric coefficient? The no numerator number and the denominator number, just like that. All right, now the last one is just another way of checking that idea that I introduced in part B to you. The fact that our, um, we can always put a one in front of a variable, and then we should be able to see that the numeric coefficient for this last one is a negative one. So that's a numeric coefficient. Now the next concept is like terms. So let's take a look at the following um, terms and we're going to see if they're alike or not. So in part A we have um, two terms are alike, remember, if they're um, variable portions are exactly the same. So you probably should um, pause these and see if you can do this without my assistance and then come back and check yourself. All right, part A, we see x and x squared. And so because it's x and x squared, um, we have not like terms. Even though these things have the exact same variables, the exponents are not the same. So these are not like terms. That's what we're looking for, exactly the same variable component. Part B, we have negative 15z and 23z. The variable parts on both of them are exactly the same. So this one is a like term. And the thing that we don't want to confuse is we don't want to confuse the negative 15 and the positive